Today we've got this really nice problem that came from the math magazine. So the problem number is actually my birth year, 1209. So I think what makes this interesting is it's a combination of a rational function and then a radical function and a logarithmic function. And anytime you have this type of mixing of types of functions, you know the integral is going to be difficult and perhaps require some kind of nice trick, and that's what we'll see here. So we've got the integral from 0 to infinity of the square root of x times the natural log of x over x plus 1 all squared. So we're going to start here with an integration by parts. And so recall that whenever you use integration by parts, you generally want to split this into something that becomes easier under differentiation and then something that, well, you can just integrate in the first place. And I think perhaps the best choice here is to take u equal to the square root of x times the natural log of x. And observe, using the uh, product rule, we'll see that du is going to be equal to, let's see, 1 over 2 times the square root of x times natural log of x plus the square root of x over x dx. And well, let's just notate here that that is du. And well, maybe perhaps what we should do here is a bit of simplification because we can. Notice that this square root of x over x is in fact the same thing as 1 over the square root of x. But that allows us to factor a 1 over the square root of x out of this whole thing. And that's going to give us something like 1 over the square root of x times, let's see, it'll be half natural log of x and then plus 1 dx. So that's our du component. Okay. So if that's our du component, then our dv component will be, well, everything left over once we've made the substitution for u. So let's see, that means that dv must be equal to dx over x plus 1 squared, meaning that v is equal to uh, minus 1 over x plus 1 where I'm using the fact that this is really minus 1 times x plus 1 to the negative 1, taking the derivative, you pretty clearly get this dv term. Okay, so let's uh, partition this off into a box. So we've got it saved away. And then let's also maybe simultaneously recall the integration by parts formula, which says the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. So hopefully that's pretty familiar, but if it's not, that's what we're using here. Okay, so that's going to allow us to rewrite this in the following way. So we've got u times v, so that's going to be root x times the natural log of x all over, well, since the minus sign's a bit squirrely, let's write this as minus x minus 1. And observe that we need to evaluate that from x equals 0 up to x approaching infinity. And I guess I should say that this isn't x equals 0. It's really x approaching 0 from above, given that 0 is not in the domain of the natural log. And then after that, what we're going to do is, uh, well, the minus v du. Notice the minus sign from the v and the minus sign from the integration by parts formula will cancel. And then the du will allow us to split this into two integrals. So it's going to look something like this. So we'll have plus 1 half and then the integral from 0 up to infinity of natural log of x dx over, let's see, it'll be the square root of x times x plus 1. And then my last one will be plus the integral from 0 to infinity of simply dx over the square root of x times x plus 1. Okay, great. But now what we'd like to do is take care of this bit that's uh, been evaluated, and maybe I'll leave it, leave it as a bit of a homework exercise, that if you take the limit as x goes to 0 from above, this goes to 0. You can see that pretty easily using L'Hopital's rule on the numerator. So the numerator goes to 0, the denominator goes to negative 1, or you can treat the whole limit at once. 
And then likewise, you can use L'Hopital's rule on the infinite limit as well to show that this that part goes to zero as well. So all the ways you look at it, this term just simply disappears. And then, well, we're gonna be left with, let's copy this over, so one half, the integral from zero up to infinity of natural log of x dx over root x times x plus one. So that's one of them. And then the next one will be, well, I'm just bringing this down. So dx over radical x times x plus one. And then, well, what I'd like to do is do a bit of an analysis on this integral right here, the one involving the natural log and well, see if we can get some sort of simplification of that. And in fact, we can. Maybe I'll use this peach box just to mean that integral. And well, perhaps let's put like a red line here to point out that we're just working on this integral. So I'm gonna write this as the integral from zero to one of natural log of x dx over radical x times x plus one plus the integral from one up to infinity of the natural log of x dx over radical x times x plus one. And that's gonna motivate us to use a substitution in this second integral. And the substitution that we'll see in this second integral to help us will be y equals one over x, which is the same thing as saying x equals one over y or dx is minus dy over y squared. Okay, so let's plug that in and see what that changes our integral to. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this first one over though. Zero to one, natural log of x dx over radical x times x plus one plus, well, now what do we have? Well, I'm gonna have an integral and then what are the bounds gonna be? Well, observe if x is equal to one, y is also equal to one. So I'm gonna go one here. And then if x is approaching infinity, y will be approaching zero. So my integral is going from one to zero. But observe that I'm gonna pick up a minus sign here from the dx component. So I'm gonna just take that minus sign and use it to swap the bounds of integration back to zero to one. And then, well, I just have to be careful not to re-include the minus sign. So I would have included this single minus sign twice, which would be bad. So now I simply need to put in dx as is without the minus because we've used it and then do my uh, substitutions for x as well. So I've got the natural log of one by x over the square root of one over x times one over x plus one. Oh, sorry, that should be, these should all be y's and then times dy over, I'm gonna write my y squared as y times y. And the reason for that is I'm gonna take this first y and bring it into the square root, whereas I'm gonna bring this second y in to the other term. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna leave us with. So I've got my integral from zero to one, so I'm just bringing some stuff down here and then we'll see what happens with the next one. So I have plus the integral from zero to one of natural log of one over y, but it's well known natural log of one over y will be minus natural log of y. So I'll put that minus sign out front. And then I have dy over, well notice the y coming inside of the square root will give us a y squared in the numerator, but that cancels the y in the denominator down to a y. And likewise, this next one shifts to y plus one. Well, really one plus y, but addition is commutative. But now observe that we've got the integral minus itself, uh, just with different dummy variables, but that's clearly gonna cancel out and give us zero. So just you know, as a little bit of a midpoint summary, this bit right here, this entire integral is zero. So now if we were to maybe put a red line here to say that that's the ending of our little sub calculation, observe that now we're working on this bit right here 
and we simply need to worry about this second integral. And I can start looking at that with a nice substitution. And this substitution will be uh, a little bit, well, is it more straightforward? I think it's the same amount of straightforwardness. What we'll do is take u to be equal to, let's see, the square root of x, but that makes du equal to 1 over 2 times 1 over the square root of x dx. But that means that 1 half du is equal to dx over the square root of x. So that means that this dx over square root of x will be 1 half du. I'll take the 1 half out front and then we'll have our integral from 0 to infinity. Observe the bounds of integration do not change in this case. And then I'll have du over, well if u is equal to the square root of x, uh, pretty clearly that means that x is equal to u squared. So I have du over u squared plus 1. From this x plus 1, recall that that square root of x got gobbled up from the du. But now we can simply take the antiderivative, which is well known, and we have 1 half the inverse tangent of u evaluated from 0 to infinity. Arctan of 0 is 0. It's well known that the infinite limit of the inverse tangent is pi halves. Multiply that by 2, and or half I should say, and you get pi over 4. And that would be the final value we're looking for.